overkill. Hey, how's it going you guys? Today I'm going to be modifying this Game Boy Advance by installing this kit here. A new lens, new speaker, this is an amplifier, battery, some parts here like the diode and charging port, the new IPS screen of course along with its ribbon cable, and this DHIS kit. It's a DHUM DHIS kit from Retro 6 and Handheld Legend and that will actually allow this boosted audio to perform better than stock. So I'm going to get started here by first tearing down this Game Boy and then we'll start transferring the components into the new prepped kit and you'll see how everything goes from start to finish. So of course we're going to start by disassembling this Game Boy. Just shutting it off, removing these old batteries. Look how dirty this thing is, huh? Well, we've got some tri-wing screws to remove and uh, one Phillips here at the bottom. Of course, you'll have a battery cover you should take off. The only thing we need from this unit is the motherboard. Everything else is going to be brand new. Just going one screw at a time. All right, now we're just gonna take this rear cover off, like so, and dispose of these old, disgusting materials. Triggers can come out, as well as the side pieces. We've got two Phillips screws here and here. You might have another one here, just depending on the model. Now we have a ribbon cable to remove, right here. I'm going to use a plastic tool to just pry off these tabs. And once you have them fully pushed up, that ribbon cable should slide right off. Now if you look at your motherboard, you'll notice it's a little dirt. Give it a quick clean and remove any old pads that might still be attached before you move on to the next step. I'm just going to be using some 99% alcohol and a Q-tip. You especially want to focus on the conductive pad areas and the trigger buttons. Focus on the volume slider and your aux port. If you desolder that pad and lift up that metal housing, you can easily clean the switch and that will give you better performance. We're going to put some flux on the side of those two areas. We're going to lift that up and clean Add a little touch of solder to each. We still have to get this speaker installed. We have to get this wired up, the amp, and we have to get the DHUM DHIS kit installed. First, we're going to install the DHUM DHIS kit, as this involves more micro soldering, two large capacitors, and four SMDs. We're going to flip the board over and focus on this area C15 and C6. C15 is going to get one 10 microfarad and one 1 microfarad capacitor. I have my capacitors laid out as per the kit where they're supposed to go. And I'm going to go in and just drop a little blob of solder on the opposite end. In place. Now you're going to take the long lens, solder that to ST on the cartridge port pin. Then you're going to bend the other leg down and secure it. This is a capacitor that we're going to be doubling up. My camera cut out, but I just soldered this point here and cut the excess. Now the DHUM DHIS kit is completely installed. Flipping the board back over again, we have the speaker. We're going to flood those two points with solder so we can remove the speaker and install our new one. As you can see, if you just heat it up and lift, it'll just fall right out. Now I'm gonna prep these pads and install each wire. We're gonna have one wire going here on top of R26. We're gonna have a wire going here, a little hidden on the negative side of this capacitor. We're going to have a wire hitting SP1, and we're gonna have our two speaker wires coming off of those two leads. I'll be using 30 gauge wire for this.
Now let's flip it over and get the speaker installed. So we know the speaker is going to sit right about here. We can cut the wires a little short and mount it exactly where we need it. Now that we have that all out of the way, we can prepare our diode and our wires so that we can install our battery and our battery charger. So I'm going to take this, wrap it around a few times, and then solder it. When we install this, we're going to make sure that our diode is pointing with the black side facing in. Take your adhesive, remove the plastic, using the corners as a guide, maneuver it into place, now you're going to take your screen, remove the plastic film. I always do it face down to avoid any dust and insert your screen far to the right. Now prepare your lens. Now we're going to drop in our buttons. Don't forget the light pipe. Now we're gonna get ready to install our TP2 wire and our left and right trigger control wires. So first we're gonna put this into the slot, press down our tabs, all the way and we're going to set this off to the side or on the top. Let's get those in first. Got some brand new ones. Next, we're installing our conductive pads. Now that we've routed our cables the way that we like them, we can cut down our wire, solder them in place. A drop of flux to make the job easier. Cut down the tab with some flush cutters. Now you can start putting your screws in if you'd like. Now that all your screws are in, take your battery. You can orient it any way that you'd like. Apply some double-sided tape or hot glue.
All right, now that all four are installed, just clean it up, secure your board, cut out your window for your charging plate here, or cover, and you're done. Now let's compare that to a stock game board. All right, you guys, that does it for this build. I'm really happy with how this one came out. That quality is amazing. Huge difference. You can see that amp in there, the battery, USB-C port. If you guys want to see more of this stuff, just let me know. I'm going to be making a whole lot more videos, so thank you. Game over.